Let us, Let now, us now pray, pray your Ratsuin Perata for protection, for protection against, against COVID-19. COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, our God is kind and merciful. He is slow to anger, but rich in compassion. In this Mass, let us celebrate and experience the forgiving, healing, and merciful love of God for us. Let us now be sorry for our sins, and let us beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Thanks 
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, Creator and Ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people? whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. I will rise and go to my father. Open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. I will rise and go to my A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of this I am the foremost, but for that reason I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. The King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord.
tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me! because I have found the coin that I lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to, to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants quickly Bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry 
And when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, if I were to give a title to the three stories that Jesus narrated in our Gospel today, the one title that I will give them is Lost and Found. The stories were all about something that was lost. A lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son. But they were not lost forever because the shepherd looked for that one lost sheep. The woman search the whole house for that one coin and the father welcome back his lost son ni nawala pero hindi hinayaang mawala hinanap sila at muling natagpuan bakit pa ba hinanap There's only one answer, because what was lost was considered valuable. Kaya hinanap dahil yung nawala ay mahalaga. For the shepherd, that one sheep is so valuable that he will search out for it even if he had to leave the 99 behind. Pwedeng pwede namang sabihin, hayaan mo na yung isa. Meron ka pa namang 99 na napitira. Bakit ka magpapakapagod na hanapin yung nawawalang isa? Sasabihin ng pastol, eh mahalaga yun eh. Kaya hahanapin ko. For the woman, that one coin that was lost was so important that he will search the whole house just to find that one coin. Pwedeng pwede namang sabihin sa kanyang isang barya lang yan. Bakit mapapagurin mo ang sarili mo sa kahahanap niyan? Marami ka pa namang iba. Pero palagay ko sasabihin niya, Eh, mahalaga sa akin yun. Kaya hindi ako mapapanatag hanggat hindi ko nakikita. And for the father whose son disrespected him, whose son wished him dead, nung hingin ng anak ang kanyang mana, Parang sinasabi nung anak, hindi ko na mahintay na mamatay ka. Akin na ang mana ko. 
for this father whose son went away and sinned against him. This father welcomed his son back, embraced his son, because the son is a beloved. Kahit na meron pa siyang isang anak na masunurin sa kanya, sasabihin ng tatay na ito, syempre, hindi pa rin kumpleto kung wala yung isa. What was lost was of value. What, what, what was lost was important. That is why they looked for it. And they did not stop until they found it. What was lost was found again. Hindi ba ganyan naman tayo? Kung, namang yung, kung nawala, yung nawala ay hindi mahalaga para sa atin. Hindi na natin hahanapin. Kung may nawala kang ballpen at marami namang ibang ballpen dyan, bakit ka magpapakapagod doon sa isang ballpen na nawala? Pero kung yung ballpen na yon ay may sentimental value, kahit wala ng tinta, tinatago mo pa rin, dahil bigay yon ng isang taong mahalaga sa iyo, ay eh hahanapin mo talaga kasi mahalaga. My dear brothers and sisters, that is God. That is how God deals with us. Kung yung nawala ay mahalaga, hahanapin mo. Kahit sa tingin ng ibang tao, walang halaga. Pero kung sa'yo, mahalaga, hindi ka titigil hanggat hindi mo nakikita at naibabalik sa'yo. This is the experience of the people of Israel in our first reading today. They sinned against God. Gumawa sila ng Diyos-Diyosan at sumamba sila sa kanilang ginawang Diyos. They were unfaithful to God and God was so angry because of their infidelity. So angry that God wished to punish them. But when they repented, God relented. God recoiled. God changed His mind. Nawala ang galit ng Diyos at pinatawad niya ang kanyang bayan. The Israelites were lost. But God did not allow them to be lost forever. God found them back. This is also the experience of St. Paul. As he tells us in our second reading today, he said, I was once a blasphemer. I was once a persecutor. I was once an arrogant person. But I have been treated mercifully. Kinaawaan ako. And so St. Paul experienced what it is to be lost and what it is to be found. That is also our experience, my dear brothers and sisters. How many times have we been lost? And yet God did not allow us to be lost forever. He always finds a way to bring us back. Why? Because we are important to Him. Mahalaga tayo sa Diyos. Mahalaga tayo sa Diyos, kaya kaya tayong patawarin ng Diyos. Para sa Diyos, mas mahalaga ka kaysa sa kasalanan mo. Para sa Diyos, mas mahalaga ka kaysa sa kahinaan mo. 
Para sa Diyos, mas mahalaga ka kaysa sa galit niya. Kaya kaya niyang kalimutan ang kasalanan. Kaya niyang isang tabi ang kanyang galit. Hindi ka lang mawala sa kanya. Kapag nawala ka, hahanapin ka. Kapag lumayo ka, susundan ka. Kapag nagkamali ka, uunawain ka. Kapag nagkasala ka, papatawarin ka. At bakit nagagawa yun ng Diyos? Dahil mahalaga ka. God could not stand a day without you. And so He's always willing to forgive you. Yung pagpapatawad pala ay pagpapakita ng pagpapahalaga. Kaya dun sa salitang halaga, mahalaga, nandun yung salitang mahal, mahalaga. Kapag mahalaga, mahal. Kapag mahal, hindi mo ang mawala. At kapag hindi mo ang mawala, hahanapin mo, ibabalik mo, papatawarin mo. That is why the refusal to forgive is also a question of value and importance. Kapag hirap na hirap tayong magpatawad, tanungin natin ang ating sarili, ano ba ang mahalaga? Mas mahalaga ba yung galit kaysa dun sa tao? Mas mahalaga ba yung sakit na ginawa sa akin kaysa sa taong mahalaga sa akin? Mas mahalaga ba yung pagkakamali niya kaysa sa ugnayan naming dalawa? Because if the person is truly important to you, you could always set aside pride. You could always set aside anger. You could always set aside sin and hurt and pain because the person is more important more than anything else. Kapag hindi tayo makapagpatawad, baka mas mahalaga sa atin yung ating pride, galit, hinanakit, kaysa sa tao at ugnayan natin sa kanya. Pwede nating mawala na ang ugnayan at ang tao. Huwag lang mag-give up ang aking galit, ang aking pride. And not only in our relationships with one another, there are also many things that in the process of life, we have lost. We have lost certain Christian values like decency, like truthfulness, like honesty, like generosity, like compassion. Ang mga pagpapahalagang ito, unti-unting nawawala. Pinapahalagahan pa ba natin sila? May halaga pa ba sila sa ating buhay? Kung may pagpapahalaga tayo sa katotohanan, sa kabutihan, sa pagiging mapagbigay, sa pagiging disente ang pamumuhay, ibalik natin, pahalagahan natin, ibalik natin sa ating buhay. We could also lose our faith. Pwedeng mawala rin ang pananampalataya. Kung mahalaga ang pananampalataya sa iyo, kung mahalaga ang Diyos sa iyo, ibalik mo siya sa iyong buhay. My dear brothers and sisters, with love, what was lost can always be found. Kapag may pag-ibig, anuman ang nawala, pwedeng maibalik. Because love always has a way of finding what was lost. Love always has a way of bringing lost things, lost values, 
and lost people back into our life. With love, what was lost will surely be found. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Father ran to embrace His prodigal Son. Let us pray to our Eternal Father that all His people may receive His mercy and be cleansed from their sins. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ministries and apostolates of mercy in our Church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who work in government and for the maintenance of cities and towns, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For young people who have wandered into the darkness of vice, crime, and drugs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the will to come frequently to celebrate the sacrament of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the eternal joy of our dead brothers and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers. And we also pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father of mercy, you sent your only Son, that sinners might be reconciled to you. Hear the prayers we make for those in most need of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Neil. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagdalo sa ating misa ngayong umagang ito. Maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng kasama natin sa live streaming ng misa, lalong-lalo na po sa mga kasama natin sa pamamagitan ng DWIZ, IZTV. Maraming salamat din po sa ating mga Manila Cathedral staff and servants na naglilingkod sa ating pagdiriwa ngayon. Nawa ay pagpalain po ng Panginoon itong bagong linggo na haharapin nating lahat at nawa ay ipakita sa atin ng Diyos ang mga tunay na mahalaga sa ating buhay para ito'y ating ibalik at lalo pang pagyabungin sa ating pamumuhay araw-araw. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you now and forever. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds now and forever. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh.